Hello friends, this is Miro and welcome to my channel. Now I see that the light in the back is very wrong for this type of the video, because this is kind of a sad story, I think we need to set the mood right. There you go, blue. We need the color blue. Today I wanted to talk with you about root mealybugs and root mealybugs on my Hoyas. It's quite a wonderful experience. One day, one day I will talk about butterfly infestation. There ha that has to happen. I want butterfly infestation. Hear that, universe? Hear that? Butterflies. That's what I want to deal with. No more thrips, no more spider mites, no more mealybugs, root mealybugs, no. Butterflies. Capish? Probably shouldn't say capish to the universe. Before we get into what root mealybugs are and what is the best way to treat them, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, I don't know what the best way is, but I will share with you some treatment options, my opinions on them, what I tried and what I haven't tried, so you can decide for yourself. I wanted to share with you how I discovered root mealybugs. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw that about a month ago I shared a story about my Hoya undulata. I was checking Hoya undulata and I saw in the cover pot there were root mealybugs. It was a wonderful discovery, 10 out of 10 surprised. Hoya undulata is quite a notorious Hoya. It is very notorious for rotting easily if you overwater it. This is why I make sure to constantly check the roots to see if the roots are doing well. I have the ability to do this because my Hoya undulata is potted in a net pot. This also means that I quite regularly inspect the roots. Imagine my surprise knowing that I inspected my Hoya undulata couple of weeks prior to this and now I see a bunch of root mealybugs. I started to check Hoyas around her and then things started to kinda not make sense to me. I saw that some of them had them, some of them didn't. Some of them showed more advanced signs and some less. I had to ask myself, how is this possible? Why do some of them have more and some of them have less? And why is it that my Hoya undulata that is on this side of the shelf has root mealybugs, some plants here don't, and Hoyas on that side of the shelf, again, some have them, but Hoyas in the middle or in between, they don't have any. What happened? I started to wonder, which led me to wonder. I started to wonder. I couldn't help but 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 wonder. So I traced my steps a couple months back. I had my Hoyas in Mars Hydro Tent. I did not have all of them because not all of them could fit in the tent. And the tent experience was wonderful. I had them in there for a couple of months. They grew a lot. They loved the tent. It was perfect. Another thing that loved the tent, root mealybugs. The working theory is this. When I got Hoya Subquinto Planervis, and when I was removing that coconut husk, I noticed some root mealybugs on this Hoya. This Hoya was imported and it was infested. After I made that video, I heard from a lot of people that they purchased Hoya Subquinto Planervis and they also discovered root mealybugs. All of these Hoya Subquinto Planervis are from the same batch. I think they are grown in Southeast Asia, they are purchased from European nurseries, they are shipped to Europe and they are distributed everywhere. Before I noticed root mealybugs on my Hoya Subquintuple Nervous, it was hanging on my Hoya shelf and it was next to my Hoyas that were 100% healthy because they are mostly grown from cuttings and they were all repotted and quite frankly I monitor them very closely. I know they didn't have any root mealybugs whatsoever. Of course, I'm not blaming a nursery or anyone it is my own fault for not isolating the plant. You should always do that. And I know, it is very hard. I myself don't have any space where I could isolate a plant for up to two months to see if everything was fine. And even after that time, something can still go wrong. So I typically don't do it. What I do is I repot the plant as soon as I can. In this case, that was one week after I got it. During that time, I did hang the plant near my Hoyas, I did water them, so I imagined a couple of eggs got into a pot or got onto a tray, and that's all you really need. Pests can spread very easily if there are no predators, and in our homes we usually don't have them. We may sometimes introduce them when we have an infestation, but typically they don't live in our homes. It's not an ecosystem, it's very isolated. To make the long story short, that's how I think I got root mealybugs on my Hoyas. They somehow transferred from Hoya Subquinto Planervis onto one of my Hoyas, and then I put those Hoyas in grow tent, 
they had a chance to proliferate in the grow tent because those conditions are ideal for root mealybugs. It's warm, it is humid. That's what they love. It's really good for your plants, but it's also very good for root mealybugs. After a couple of months, I decided to disassemble my Mars Hydro tent because I would constantly spill water, it would go under the tent, it was impossible to clean, and my space is very limited. This wasn't the most efficient use of my space. I decided to stop growing the plants in the tent. I only wanted to try it out. My main objective is actually to just try and use the grow light, which is in the back it's wonderful. I will make a separate video. It is coming hopefully in the next, let's say in the next month to give myself some time. I got the Hoyas out of the tent and I decided to treat them with a nice shower in the bathtub. And I thought while I'm at it, why not treat all of my Hoyas to the shower in a bathtub? You know, clean up the dust. If there are any spider mites that will, you know, blast them off, it will be nice. And sometimes, even if we have the best intentions, we can do something that is quite stupid. It was stupid of me to group all of my Hoyas from the tent and from the shelf in the bathtub to give them a shower because I removed the cover pots so they were just all sitting in net pots and I gave them a nice shower. And guess what? That is sharing water. The easiest way for root mealybugs to spread is by sharing water. And this is exactly what happened here. Even if I didn't use the net pots, there would still be some water sharing because water would come out from the drainage holes. And you know, if a plant was in the tent and next to it was a plant that wasn't in the tent, that water would be absorbed to some extent. And you know, you only need a couple of eggs to get root mealybugs in there. And then, you know, within several weeks, month, two months, they will eventually start to spread. They are very good at that, at multiplying and multiplying. That's what they love to do. So that is how they spread to my Hoyas, and that is possibly why some of them had more and some of them had less. I did notice that plants that were in the tent had more and plants that weren't in the tent had less. On top of it, when I water, there is some water splashing. It is impossible to water so many plants to water them quickly and not to splash. If the water come, goes from one pot to another, there you go. That is all that you need. That solves the mystery of how root mealybugs spread amongst my horse. But before we continue, let's just talk a bit what are root mealybugs? When I made my Hoyas of Quintuple Nervous video, I saw that a lot of you were actually unaware that root mealybugs exist. And that's perfectly fine. I was unaware of this too until I got them. And boy, did I love living in the bliss of not knowing they exist. Root mealybugs are tiny wingless insects that live in the soil. They are white or creamy and waxy. They used to be part of the mealybug family, but I do believe that 10 years ago or so they were separated into their own family, so they were elevated. If you want to read more about that, I will link the paper down below. Personally, no thank you, absolutely not. I'm not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna go down that route. If you're interested, you can read for yourself. For me, the experience of having them was enough needing to battle them was more than enough and that's all i need to know they're nasty i don't like them they need to die that's it and this is the part how do we get rid of root mealybugs turns out it's quite difficult to get rid of root mealybugs even if you remove all the potting mix there can still be eggs attached to the roots there can still be something that you don't see and then in several months they will spread again. One of the first things that you will see when you start to look into how to get rid of root mealybugs is to cut your losses. If the plant isn't very significant to you, if it's not super rare, throw it out. It's not worth it. Unfortunately, the Hoyas that I have are very hard to get for me. There are no Hoyas here. Sometimes getting even a Carnosa can be difficult. So I'm quite surprised that I have so many and that's because I'm Hoya crazy, but well, we'll talk about that some other time. So the first option was absolute no for me. I'm not gonna throw away my Hoya Undulata. I'm not going to be defeated by root mealybugs. Now, some of the other options are to cut the roots and root the plant again. And this would be fine, and this is something that I actually did do with some of my Hoyas, but I couldn't do with Hoya Undulata. It has a very short stem and the plant isn't big enough for me to root it again. I would have to get rid of the roots and I would have very, very tiny amount of stem to work with. 
and it would just be too difficult. So I decided not to do that for that Hoya. I did do that for some of the other Hoyas and it works really well. If you cut the roots, no more issue. Root mealybugs will stay in the soil and they will not go up. And that's actually one of the reasons why it is so hard to spot them. The symptoms of root mealybug infestation are yellowing leaves, plant looks dehydrated, and that is also a symptom of overwatering or underwatering or root rot. So it's quite difficult to spot them if you don't see them, and seeing them in the soil sometimes can be difficult. You can take out the plant and on the outside there may be none, but inside the root ball there may be some root mealybugs that you don't see. Usually by the time they reach the outside and when you can see a lot of them, that means that you have a pretty serious infestation going on. This is why one of the best treatments is to just cut the roots, root the plant again if you can. I started to do that and I did that for about 15 Hoyas and then I realized I cannot continue to do this. I already made 40 cuttings and that's because some of the Hoyas had to be cut in several smaller cuttings. If you have a Hoya with bigger leaves, it is very difficult to root a cutting that has six, seven, eight nodes or more. Usually with big leaved Hoyas you want to go with two nodes, three nodes, two nodes I find the best, sometimes I even go with one node if I'm propagating and then you can quickly get a new vine. With smaller leaved Hoyas that's fine, you know, you can cut them into eight, nine nodes depending on the Hoya and that is easier to root. But with big leaved Hoyas it's very, very difficult. So after doing that for 15 Hoyas, I realized I cannot keep doing this. I will have 500 cuttings where I'm going to put those. I don't have the space. So I kept looking. Another treatment that is recommended and that supposedly works really, really well is something that I mentioned in that video about removing coconut husk. You need to heat the root ball to about 110 degrees of Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees of Celsius. These numbers may not be correct, please do check them if you want to do this. But the treatment is as follows. You have to soak the root ball in hot water and you have to maintain that temperature for 15 minutes or 20 minutes. That's quite difficult to maintain the temperature of the water constant. The water will just cool down and then it will lose the efficiency. If the temperature of the water goes down, it will not kill all the eggs. If the temperature is too hot, you may end up killing the plant. So that's a treatment that I wasn't ready to do. I thought it would be very difficult to keep these Hoyas in water and maintain the temperature at 40 degrees. I didn't even think of a way to do this. If you know a way how to do this, let me know in the comments below because, you know, maybe that is something we need to do in the future. Some other treatments that people suggest are to soak them with hydrogen peroxide. I did use hydrogen peroxide mixed with water in the past to get rid of fungus knots in soil. It didn't really work for me. I spent a lot of money on hydrogen peroxide. It's not very cheap and usually you get them in small bottles. so. That would cost a lot of money for something that may not even work. And if it didn't kill fungus gnats, is it really going to work on root mealybugs? Probably not. Another thing that people recommend is neem soak. You mix neem oil, dishwashing liquid and water. And we will get to dishwashing liquid a bit later. And you water the plants with this solution. I did use neem oil in the past to treat spider mites. It didn't really work for me. So once again, I thought maybe the neem oil that I can get here is not the right kind. It says it's cold pressed neem oil, but who knows? I see that a lot of people are satisfied with it. Personally, it never worked for me. Didn't get rid of the thrips, didn't get rid of the spider mites. I wasn't gonna waste more money on something that may not work. I was not gonna waste time and risk mealybugs continuing to spread among my Hoyas. For heavier infestations, they do recommend that you use systemic insecticide. All of my plants are indoors. No pollinators ever come in contact with them. So I thought, okay, maybe this is something that I can do. But then again, I'm not a fan of systemic insecticides just you know, because of my own health. I don't need to die to keep the plants alive. That's a bit dramatic, I think. So what did I decide to do? Well, I started to cut some of my Hoyas and that was fine. I cut about 15 of them, which at that time was probably slightly less than a fourth of my collection. What did I do with the rest of them? Well, I started to remove all the potting mix. And it's important, you have to remove the potting mix. 
you don't want to have any mealy bugs in there you have to make sure get that potting mix out and use a fresh batch of potting mix and i decided i will soak the roots in solution of water and dishwashing liquid i was not gonna use neem oil i thought about using paraffin oil which i used in the past with success to treat the spider mites but i thought maybe it's not the best idea to use paraffin oil on the roots of the plant so i didn't i mix the solution that i usually mix to spray the leaves it is one liter of water and only about a drop of dishwashing liquid and when i say a drop really a, a small tiny tiny drop of dishwashing liquid it doesn't even foam up i soaked the plants i inspected the roots i didn't see anything yes there may be some eggs but i thought okay it is fine a couple of days later something started to happen and it not with roots the roots were fine it was the leaves behold the horror can you see that that is a burned leaf and this plant had two or three more leaves that dropped unfortunately i was quite lucky that i didn't soak all of my hoyas in this solution i soaked about 30 or 40 so you know there was still about 20 or so that were not soaked in this and i simply didn't have enough time it takes an entire day to remove the soil to wash the roots to make sure that you don't damage the roots to soak them and to go through 20 Hoyas or 40 Hoyas, depending how many you intend to do. And trust me, this isn't the only example. I have about 20 Hoyas that have burned leaves. Within the next 24 to 48 hours, the leaves started to show symptoms of burn. They started to drop. It was and still is quite nasty. When I still look at that, that's just not something that I want to see. I rarely get leaf drop on my Hoyas, I rarely get leaf yellowing, so to see this happening because of that, I felt devastated. So at this moment I stopped the treatment, because I didn't know what, what is wrong. I thought maybe it is stress related, maybe it is because the water is too cold. In first several hours it looks almost as if your plant has cold damage, you start to get Th these wet spots wet looking spots and you think oh no maybe the water is too cold with a bit of research i figured out that the culprit was the dishwashing liquid a lot of the times people say dishwashing soap it is not a soap the only correct term for this product is dishwashing detergent for something to be a soap you can only have three ingredients some type of natural fat sodium or potassium hydroxide and water that's it Sometimes, you know, you can add some scent, but typically you will only have those. If it's anything else than that, it is not a soap, it is a detergent. The difference between a soap and a detergent is detergents use surfactants. And, you know, chemically speaking, they're very different soaps from detergents. Detergents do a much better job of breaking down fats and acids. And what I think happened is when I soaked my Hoyas, when I soaked the roots, I also soaked some of the leaves. I thought I'll use this on the leaves before it is fine. In the past, I only used it with paraffin oil. So possibly because of the presence of paraffin oil, it was much harder for the soap to go into the leaf, to enter through stomata. When you use detergent for plants, it can burn the leaves. I'm not the only person that this has happened to. There is countless evidence on the internet and also my friend did the exact same treatment and she burned the leaves too. In the past, she also would soak the plants in a mixture of water and dishwashing detergent, but she would use alcohol in the past and she says they were fine. I never tried this again. If you want to try that, you are on your own. You bear the responsibility. I only know that I soaked in dishwashing detergent and water and I got leaf burn. Serious leaf burn and leaf drop. I do think that because the leaves were soaked, it was much easier for the dishwashing detergent to penetrate the leaf. When we just spray the plant, it doesn't really penetrate the leaf. It kind of stays on the surface. I imagine you can still get burn. I didn't. But then again, in the past, I would always use dishwashing detergent in combination with paraffin oil. This time in this water bath, it was just dishwashing detergent and water. Only two ingredients. So possibly if I used oil, this wouldn't happen. Maybe it would be much more difficult for the detergent to penetrate the leaf. But I didn't. I didn't think about it. 
I didn't think the dishwashing detergent is something that can be so harmful. Yes, I do know when there is bleach, it can damage the plant, but this detergent is something that I used before. I never had any negative experience with it, so I thought, it's fine. Clearly, it's not fine. The good thing from all this is that I didn't lose a single Hoya. Yes, the leaves are burnt, some of the leaves dropped, but the roots are healthy and generally the plants are healthy overall. Even this Hoya, there is new growth here and another new growth is activating right there. So it will make it, it will not die. It's just that this is more of a setback. And what's the point of this story? I didn't share with you the treatment that I think is the best. I told you that dishwashing detergent may be harmful. This is supposed to serve as a cautionary tale. Whatever you read on the internet, whatever a plant tuber or whoever tells you to do, be careful about it. Test it. I was rushing and I didn't have time to test. I wanted to be done as soon as I can. I wanted to do this quickly. If I did test this, and if I did it on five or six plants, then stopped, waited two, three days, I would have seen what had happened. And again, I probably think it would take a lot of time for me to figure out because I don't think many people talk that dishwashing detergent is not safe to use for plants. In my opinion, probably the best way to treat root mealybugs is to either cut the roots, root the plant again, or try to use insecticidal soaps. Insecticidal soaps are actual soaps. Unfortunately, they're also not available here, but I do think next time I order Hoyas, I will make sure to order some insecticidal soaps. Insecticidal soaps use potassium hydroxide, so I think sodium hydroxide can be still very harmful, and I think it's best not to mix anything on your own. I will definitely not mix any of my home treatments again. I will make sure to get something that is approved and tested to use on plants and Trust me, in the future, I will definitely still test. Even if they say it's safe for plants, I will test to see if that is true. One product may work on one plant and be safe for one plant, but it can damage the other. So it's really best to test and to wait. There is no infestation that will kill your plant from one day to the next day. And this is what I constantly forget. I see mealybugs, I see thrips, I panic. I, I don't like to see them. I have a lot of plants and I don't want them to spread. But I think we need to get over this anxiety and wait. If you have thrips, if you have mealybugs, if you have spider mites, they have been there for several weeks. You doing something in a day is not gonna change anything. Test and wait. And I'm guilty of this too. I'm not saying this just to you. I'm guilty of this too. I see something, I start to get very upset about it. I, I tend to also obsess about things. So, you know, when I see thrips, the only thing I can think of is that plant has thrips, that plant has thrips, that plant has thrips. And my brain keeps doing that. And I keep thinking it has thrips. I have to deal with it. It has thrips. I have to deal with it. And then I start to inspect the other plants. You know, sometimes they don't see anything and I'm like, oh, but it has thrips. They're somewhere, they're hiding. Because, you know, pests, as I said, they spread very quickly and sometimes you don't see them unless you have an infestation going on. You're not gonna see one thrip. You're not gonna see one mealybug. You are going to see when you have 10, 20. That is when you start to notice them and they multiply very fast. Pests are part of growing plants. Best to accept it. If you have plants, you will have pests. We have to get over this anxiety, you know, calm ourselves down, pull ourselves together. I mean, what the hell? supposed to do now damn it woman pull yourself together <laughs> have some pride for the love of god take it easy treat them when we can if they're meant to live they will live i think personally we sometimes do even a better job than mother nature remember all of the plants that we have in our homes those are not the best and the strongest clones most of those would probably die if they were in nature. Only the strongest ones survive. So if you think about it, Mother Nature is a plant killer. Just saying, there is a window there, I'm talking to Mother Nature. <laughs> She's right there. <laughs> she isn't, I am aware. <laughs> I think the beer is starting to get to me.
Another positive thing is that I had a chance to transfer some of my hoists to semi-hydro. The reason I did this is because after about a year and a half of testing, I saw that semi-hydro works in my conditions and it does make growing plants a bit easier. Not all of them are in semi-hydro. The new hoists that I showed to you, they are still in organic mix, but I'm kind of now leaning more towards semi-hydro. And I'm just going to show you some results because why not? This is my Hoya undulata. You can see it is in semi-hydro. It pushed out this vine. It didn't have it. This happened only and after the transfer. I don't see still any roots poking out of the pot, uh, but it was transferred about a month ago. It was a bit limp in the beginning and that's because of the transfer, but now it's doing well. I don't see any root mealybugs. I did remove all the potting mix and I did soak the roots in systemic insecticide. The roots are fine now. I hope we don't get root mealybugs. Oh, I see a root. Ooh, nice. Another thing, you absolutely can get root mealybugs in semi-hydro. It happened on my Hoya verticillata. You can absolutely get them. If someone tells you that you should grow plants in semi-hydro because they don't get pests, it's absolutely untrue. You can get pests in semi-hydro. You can get root mealybugs in semi-hydro. Pests are completely possible in semi-hydro. The reason why I grow in semi-hydro is because it's easier for me to water the plants. It's easier for me not to let them go to dry. And you know, this notorious thing does well in semi-hydro. I would say even much better than in regular potting mix. And the reason for that is, you know, it likes moisture, it likes aeration, what we talked about in my potting mix video. So, you know, it's not true that Hoyas don't like moisture. Clearly they would die in semi-hydro if that were the case. Another absolutely fantastic example is my Hoya mitrata. Look at that leaf. This plant stayed like this. This is the old growth. It grew like cabbage. <laughs> it kind of looks like cabbage patch or something like that. I, kid, I was joking with some of my friends, you know, when will it push out a vine? What is this plant doing? Will it always look like cabbage? It was growing like this for almost a year and then whoop, we get a vine and we get the gorgeous leaf. This has to do with light. When you give them slightly less light, they will push out bigger leaves. I'm absolutely in love with this leaf. This is currently my favorite Hoya. Currently. You know, if you want to be my favorite Hoya, we'll have to work much harder than that. Let's just compare the leaves. See? Gorgeous! I love this one so much. That was creepy. If you want me to do my favorite Hoya foliage video, let me know down in the comments below if you're up for that. If you're not, that's fine. That is it with my root mealybug experience. Wasn't very pleasant. Zero out of 10 would not go through it again. I hope that you learned something new. I think the biggest takeaway here is, first, if you're gonna follow someone's advice on the internet, it's only your responsibility. I certainly don't blame people where I read that, you know, this soapy liquid water thing is good treatment. We are all responsible. We cannot blame people on the internet for something. We cannot shift the blame. You know, I take the responsibility for following this treatment, for following this advice. I should have known better. I should have tested the plants, should have done one, waited one day, two days to see if it's okay, and then do the rest of them. My own fault. I don't blame anyone else. Also, another important thing, don't share water. Please don't share water. I know that for some people it's okay. And you know, it works. It's, sometimes it's easier to water plants that way to put them on a single tray that will catch the water. That's great. But really, it only takes one plant. It takes for you to introduce one plant. It takes for one wrong batch of potting mix and you can have a very serious infestation on your hands. You can even maybe get a plant and the plant can have a virus that may not show in the first couple of months. And then what have you done? Let me know down in the comments below if you did follow some treatment on the internet and it led to a catastrophic outcome. I don't know why the accent is changing. I think it's time to end the video and that is why. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for heaven's sake. Okay, definitely time to stop. Definitely time.
I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and see you soon. Bye! That's a crazy way to say goodbye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big shout out for my special tier, Danube Daniels and Spinach Geek. Thank you so much for your support. I also want to give a big shout out to my $5 patrons. Double the shout out for Elena Coddington, for my one anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Dinsla, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nardi Kathy, Tanya, Tom Ibbotson, Vicky Dingler, and Slavkovni Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Kara Cactus, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlo. And also, a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline, Free Hitty and Ask, and Jacinta. Thank you all so much for your support. I hope you're enjoying the videos. I hope you're not using dishwashing liquid detergent on your plants. Use it just to wash the dishes or get someone to do dishes for you. I don't like to do the dishes. Do you like to do the dishes? I think it's very boring. Also, like, it's not good on your skin as well. You have to wear gloves. So why in the heck do we use it for plants? Dumb, dumb, dumb. Tis definitely high time to end this video. I will see you next time. Goodbye. Shh,